I've had the Quad Cortex for about a month now and have been experimenting to see if I can get it to sound like how my old pedal board rig did. <laughs> When I made that series of presets, it was actually the night before a gig and I had already worked 10 straight hours on arrangements and I kind of just winged it. So all things considered, I didn't think the tones were really that bad, but it wasn't really what I was hoping for. This round of presets, I felt like I was making pretty good headway and getting towards an equivalent sound to my pedal board. The amps I dialed in were much more my vibe, and ultimately I felt like the effects were really starting to work in the way that I wanted to. But now, after one month with the Quad Cortex, I'm back. This past week I was in tour rehearsals for Lauren Gray. We're gonna be opening up for a segment of Hunter Hayes tour. And I'm pretty stoked about it because I've never been on a country tour and I love country music. Also, I'm finally getting to use the Quad Cortex for what I bought it for, which is touring and traveling. Today I'm gonna break down how it went with the QC and rehearsal, the good, the bad, the tones. So let's dive in. First off, load in and load out was as you would guess, incredibly simple. I walked in with the quad cortex, a couple guitar cables and my two guitars, and that was pretty much it. I plugged two XLRs into the quad cortex and just put it directly into the snake, no DI required. Then for guitars, I had my electric plugged into input one and my acoustic plugged into input two. That way when we're in the set, I don't have to worry about unplugging and plugging in guitars. I can just grab the one I need and start playing. Second, making presets on the quad cortex is actually really great. The touchscreen interface really doesn't take that much time to get familiar with. It's pretty intuitive and it's very fast. With just a couple taps of your finger, you'll have your dream pedal board set up, no cables and no dual lock required. I think the only thing that slows down this process a little bit is the massive amount of sounds this thing comes with. But once you find your favorite sounds, the process is very simple. So if you've been watching this channel over the years, you know that I can be at times somewhat particular about my sound. And it was also my first time working with this music director, so I wanted to be sure I made a good impression. So both of those things led me to spend a significant amount of time dialing this thing in. I honestly probably spent about an hour and a half just trying to get a good amp tone that I was going to use as the foundation for the show. Anyway, I'm super excited with what I landed on and I think it sounds great and definitely worked really well for this set. <laughs> Does anyone have any guesses what amps I used? Anyone? All right, comment your guesses down below. So I ended up using a Matchless Chieftain on the left and the Fender Princeton 65 on the right, both of which are just standard stock neural factory captures. And I only found out about the factory captures because one of you commented that I should check them out. So to that person I say, God bless you. We can go into depth on this in another video, but if you watched last week's video where we tested out if the Quad Cortex could really capture my amp, I'd say in general, the neural captures do seem to capture the liveliness and the character of your amp a little closer than the models do. That's just kind of a taste thing. Anyway, if you have a Quad Cortex and you haven't checked out the neural factory captures, give that list a look. You might find something you really like. Once I got the amp tone I wanted, the rest of the process was actually pretty easy. I essentially made a pedal board per song, and that was my preset. Then using scene mode, I would turn off the individual effects within that pedal board to match the sound I needed for whatever part of the song we were on. It might take a second to get used to scene mode. It definitely took me a couple tries, but once you get it, it really clicks and it's very intuitive. And one of my favorite features within scene mode, and I'm pretty sure it applies to presets as well, is they have copy and paste. So you can actually just copy and paste sounds between different scenes. And if you're looking to make a new song preset that uses a lot of the same effects, 
you can just do a save as to duplicate your preset and then just pull out the couple things you're not going to use and add in whatever you need. I did that a ton and man, my workflow has never been faster. All right, that's enough talking. Here's some tones I dialed in for the show. Do you remember how I talked about before rehearsal, you'll learn the arrangement and program all your sounds, and then you get in rehearsal and the arrangement changes, and then the MD's like, I need these new sounds and new parts? Well, guess what? When you get into rehearsal with the artist, oftentimes these arrangements change. And now you might need a completely different sound, which means you need to go buy another pedal and redo your pedal board for the 12th time. So that happened more than once, as it usually does. And truthfully, this was the thing I was most nervous about. Like sure, I'm good at sound design, but I wasn't sure how fast I would be on the quad cortex, especially since this was my first significant rehearsal with it. So the first time this happened, the MD told me I had a little too much reverb and my chorus was too wide. I literally just subbed in a shorter reverb block and then pulled up the parameters of the chorus and I turned a couple things down, did a save as, and I was done. When you open up one of the effects blocks on the quad cortex, I love that it shows you all the parameters because it makes fine tune adjustments like what I'm describing really simple. And hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to leave a like, I'd really appreciate it. The second instance this happened in rehearsal, we ended up taking an acoustic song and turning it electric. The MD specifically asked me to use a few sounds I had in a previous song and all I had to do was open up that preset, click save as, type in the name of the song, change the BPM, boom, done. Even the MD commented on how fast I was with all the changes he was throwing at me. And look, I'm not saying you couldn't do these changes on the fly with a pedal board, especially if you have a more simplistic rig. With how my old pedal board is set up with the MIDI switcher and the controller, it probably would take me two to three times as long to do the same thing. So for me, being able to easily adjust and be creative with the sounds in the pressure of a rehearsal environment was a big win. I give this device a 10 out of 10 just for that. So when I told the MD that I was using a quad cortex on my acoustic, he was a little hesitant because on a different gig, he said the guitarist was doing that and he thought the acoustic sounded not good, but he thought mine sounded good. And look, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is not earth shattering DI guitar tone. It's just a little bit of enhancement so that it doesn't sound like a purely raw, thin, plasticky acoustic guitar. So just think, with my most basic level of sound processing, the jump in quality of audio was pretty big. I truthfully didn't have very many drawbacks with the quad cortex, but the biggest one for me is the gap in audio between presets. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm using scene mode to change presets within a song, so you don't get any of that gap in audio, that's fine. But on some of the songs, we have a pretty quick transition where my reverb is supposed to spill over into the top of the next song. Well, that's where the problem is. Once I switch the preset to open up the scenes for the new song, there is a slight loss in the audio. Here, I'll show you what I mean. It's not the end of the world but it's slightly annoying. I guess the workaround is that I could combine the presets I have for the two connected songs onto one. So I could have maybe like the top row of buttons be the scenes for song one and the bottom row of buttons be the scenes for song two, something like that. I don't really wanna do that. 
guitarist problems. And also from what I've heard, the only unit that doesn't have that gap in audio between presets is the Kemper. Even Axe Effects and the Helix do the same gap. Maybe one day we'll get an update that fixes it, but until then, second, I'm kind of half going back on what I said about the buttons in the first video I made on the Quad Cortex. I was a little worried about the spacing of the buttons, and I'm sure someone else out there has had this thought when they've seen the unit, but actually wasn't a problem. I guess I'm a little more precise with my foot than I thought, or the spacing is actually just plenty, but yeah, that wasn't an issue for me at all. I think the buttons actually are maybe a little close together. I pressed the wrong button more than once, and yeah, that's definitely on me. But I think unless you're really precise with your feet, it's gonna be a common problem. Like, is this a make or break thing for the unit? Absolutely not. It just means I have to be slightly more intentional with my button pressing until I get used to the spacing. Or I could just have Ableton switch my patches for me. Finally, for how customizable this unit is, there's two slightly annoying things about it. First, you can't change the order of presets within a set list, so the workaround is you copy and paste to a blank preset and you just keep doing that until it's now in the new correct order. But I think it would just be easier if you could just click it and drag it to the appropriate position. Because I mean, you guys know, the set list changes like 12 to 500 times <laughs> until the show starts. And then after the second show, you probably change it again. Second, I really wish you could change the color of scenes. Just for me visually, I think it would be helpful to see colors and not just words. It changes colors in stomp mode, so it's not like this ability isn't in there in some form. Once again, Two easy things that could probably be addressed in some sort of software update, I think. Anyway, I loved having the Quad Cortex at tour rehearsals. The sounds are good, the flexibility is really good, and it's just, it's just practical for touring and traveling. I think especially if you're doing an opening act run like what I'm doing, the less things you have to deal with, the better. You want to get on stage, make it simple for the sound people, and get off stage as quick as you can. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to see how this thing does on tour, and for more videos on the Quad Cortex, leave a like, a comment, and I will catch you next time.